Singapore. It's bright and early and it's about to rain, but let's hope the rain doesn't deter me from my adventures today. I'm here at the Botanical Gardens MRT stop and inside, down underground, they have this walkway. That's impressive. So I'm here inside the Singapore Botanic Gardens, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This place is massive. The rain has begun. But luckily, I've made it to the visitor center where I could rest for a bit and let the storm pass through. So I'm inside the National Orchard Garden and I got it for free because of my student ID. So yay. And this orchard garden is apparently the largest orchard garden in the world. With over 1,200 species and 2,000 hybrids. It began in 1928 and there's a lot of different cool sites inside here. It's raining but hey, it's always fun to explore, even in the rain. So I'm here inside the VIP Orchard Garden and pretty much every time a famous heads of state comes to visit Singapore, they make an orchard dedicated to that person to promote goodwill and foster closer ties. For example, this right here, this orchard is in honor of David Cameron, the Prime Minister of the UK. Moving over. This orchard right here is named after the head of state of Qatar, who visited in 2009. So now I'm inside this cool house. And man, it is cool and cold in here with the AC turned on. Pretty much this area is where all the plants that are native to the Southeast Asian area are stored. So that way they could maintain their natural habitat as much as possible. This huge tree right here, the Cola Gigantia, was dedicated to the late former South African president, Nelson Mandela, who visited here in 1997. It's an African tree that is situated here in Singapore. Sundial Garden. 
in the middle of four water tanks. Part of the reason why this trip is so much fun because traveling alone, a lot of times you just go on the spot, spontaneous plans. So after the garden, I just hopped onto the bus and it brought me back to the city where I'm now in front of the big orchard mall, the shopping district. I'm underground here at the Ion Orchard Mall. This is a good place to eat for lunch. And like all the Asian places, malls are the best place to chill to beat the heat and humidity. Here's the food court. So I'm inside the National Museum of Singapore. It's always nice coming to museums to learn about history, especially this is a special island that was British colony until 1965. So it's time to learn more about how Singapore is and how it came to be as one of the hubs of Southeast Asia. So walking through the streets of Singapore, over here, clearly the British influence is on as they still drive on the left hand side of the road, as was the case in Thailand, Hong Kong, the UK and stuff. And so that means boarding the buses is always on the left side. It took me a while to get used to it, but then now I guess I just think of everything as the opposite. Left turn is the easiest to make while right turn you have to So I'm here at the Singapore Civic Area in which it's like their capital area. And so here's the parliament. This is where they make the decisions here in the Republic of Singapore. And to the left across the street is the Supreme Court. It's very different from the one in the US in DC. So I made my way inside the parliament to learn more about how they work here in Singapore. It's really fascinating to learn about their government here in the Republic of Singapore. So 
So I'm here still in the Civic District of Singapore and I'm right next to the Victoria Theater or Victoria Memorial Hall with the theater inside. Clearly a British influence. And across the way you can see those three buildings right there and something like a cruise ship resort on top. That is the Marina Bay Sands, which I'll be going to tomorrow. So I'm here at another museum, the Asian Civilizations Museum, in which they have a lot of stuff regarding the history and culture of Southeast Asia. Again, it's really interesting to just learn more about the cultural history of this area. So I just finished at the Asian Civilization Museum and now I'm walking alongside the Singapore River. This is the river that cuts through the heart of Singapore and downtown is right across the river with these tall buildings. And Singapore, it's about one degree above the equator so it's really hot and humid year round. However, today it doesn't really feel as humid as it rained earlier today. So thank goodness for that rain to cool things down a little bit. I made it here to Clark Quay Shopping District, in which right next to the Singapore River. A lot of colorful, cutesy looking shops. One of the best things about being in Singapore is that it's very diverse, so you get all kinds of Southeast and East Asian food. So, for dinner today, Back at the food court, I got a Macau style baked rice with pork and Taiwan's very own gong chow. Cross country running indoors, subway style. That's pretty interesting. So I'm here at sunset next to the Esplande Theater in which they have concerts and shows inside but however I'm trying to get to the waterfront to see a light show that begins in about 30 minutes. The sun is setting here day one in Singapore. I've made it to the mouth of the Singapore River in which it joins the Singapore Bay and that's the Marina Bay Sands. Downtown Singapore after dark. Southeast Asia's largest light and water show.
So I'm back here again in Chinatown and it's pretty much like the night market. All these stores are all lit up and selling stuff, food, shopping, still this late into night. Hello Singapore. I finally made it here to the only city and nation state in the world. <laughs> 